Hey everyone, it's Omar here from Thought, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about the 2007 video game Portal. Created by Valve, the puzzle game requires you to get through levels by teleporting the player character and certain objects using a portal gun, or as it's called in the game, the Aperture Science handheld portal device. It's a great game and it's remembered as one of the most original games of 2007, but we aren't here to talk about the game itself, but rather the end credits song, Still Alive, written by Jonathan Colton. Let's dive right into it. To give some context, the song in question is sung by the antagonist of the game, Gladys, an evil AI computer system responsible for trying to kill the player character and killing the lab scientists. It is sung at the end of the game, after Gladys' body is destroyed. It seems like a piece of dark comic relief like a lot of Gladys' quotes throughout the game, but when we take it out of context, because I know there's a lot of lore that comes with the series, it is really a discussion of the very relationship between humans and technology, and on a broader scale, humans and science. If you are still yet to hear the song, click on the annotation or the card here, because I'll be jumping around a lot and referring to different parts. The song is opened by Gladys saying, This was a triumph, which opens us up to the reasoning being used throughout the song. It is an objective reasoning, not driven by the AI's anger towards the player character, and not showing bias in her later analysis of the situation at hand. And that analysis starts with the line, Aperture Science. We do what we must, because we can. For the good of all of us, except the ones who are dead, but there's no use crying over every mistake. This is a realization that humans are going to make mistakes for the sake of science, and people will die and things will get destroyed, but under this mentality there is this foresight that despite all of the current mistakes, the result, the things learned because of those mistakes, will benefit everyone in the long run. This is valuable input and rare input from that perspective. It often occurs that a person will fight strongly for what they believe in, until it starts to harm them and then they protest against it. We're seeing none of that hypocrisy here. Instead, all there is is an understanding from the AI that it killed many and destroyed a lot for the sake of science, and it didn't respond negatively when it is killed with that same drive. And the science gets done and we make a neat gun for the people who are still alive. This whole discussion creates a new question. Is the death or harming of those who are alive now worth it for those who will live in the future? Those who will survive? This isn't just the question behind scientific advancement, but the question behind revolution, behind migration. Daring to give up what you have to guarantee more for the ones who come after you. More on the same discussion is found in later lines. As they burned it hurt because I was so happy for you. Now these points of data make a beautiful line, and we're out of beta, we're releasing on time. So I'm glad I got burned, think of all the things we learned for the people who are still alive. If we relate all this back to portal lore, we can point to evidence that says that a girl named Caroline was forced to become Gladys, and Gladys' evil derives from her subconscious want for revenge. This could be Gladys trying to face reality after a failed attempt at revenge, trying to understand the motive behind her sacrifice, that her own sacrifice was for the sake of advancement of technology. But when we relate this to the real world, we see again the question of what is the limit to what we could sacrifice for the sake of the future. Let me try to answer this to the best of my ability. Just like an individual needs to undergo harm or misfortune or a challenge to grow and become a more experienced and theoretically better individual. When it is necessary, people and societies can't be afraid to take potentially harming risks for the sake of advancing the society. The burning of Gladys was not beautiful, but the points of data that formed a line, the order that resulted, was beautiful. And then we get another dark twist, as if it wasn't dark enough already. When you're dying, I'll be still alive. When you're dead, I will be still alive. If we're sticking with that Caroline theory, we could say that this is the AI realizing that it has already won no matter what happens. It will outlive its enemies and be able to watch them all die. But although it seems dark, just looking at it from another angle shows how it really is a sliver of hope for humanity. Because humans are all going to die anyway, no matter when and how, and the only way for a generation to stay alive is to pass their knowledge on to future generations. Gladys will still be alive even after the death of Aperture Lab scientists, whether they like it or not. But at least Gladys is still alive as a representation of their knowledge and their spirit and their work and their accomplishments and their contributions to science and to the future generations to come. People survive through their contributions to the future, and Gladys is an example of that. 
Thank you for watching this week's episode of Thought. Now that you're done, you have three things to do. One, go watch my collabs with Cartoon Theory and with Sass Master Luke. Links in the description, annotations on the screen, and a card with my collab playlist in the corner of this video. Two, go check out and follow the insanely talented Samuel J. Ellis, who helped me out with this video by drawing these incredible portal minimalist vectors of Shell and Gladys. Link in the description. And three, leave a comment, a like, and subscribe to help me out and show your support. See you next Sunday.